Hello, I decided to do a supplemental video um, for those of you who wanted a little more direction um, and to slow things down on my basic sculpting process. So um, this is going to be part what is it, 2.5. Um, so I've just opened up a default scene. Um, here's the default cube. I'm going to uh, get ready to start sculpting it. I like to be in an orthographic view, so wait, let me turn on my screencast keys. So I'm going to press 5 on the numpad to do that. Now I'm in orthographic view. Orthographic, rather. Okay, I'm going to subdivide smooth this a few times, and then I'm going to do the relative shape of the head. Now, the shape I'm going for for the profile view will be something like this for the brow line, and the eyes will come out, and then the nose will, and then the lips will protrude, and then the chin will recess back into the head, and then you'll have the neck. That's basically what I'm always trying to go for. Um, so uh, I'm going to start doing that by going into uh, proportional editing mode, connected, and um, I'm just going to try and create that shape a bit. So chin would be down here. Back of the skull area. I'm not going to do too much here, but I want to do enough so that I have the general shape. The proportional editing tool is a really good tool. I use it all the time. And uh, you should too. Is that what I Oh. So I didn't have mirroring on. Mirroring on my x axis, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. Right here in options. If you're in the uh, Blender version 2.7 or higher, that is, because otherwise it's in, I believe, just the regular tools section. Okay, that's better. Now for the side profile, um, I'll be doing a female again, because I like doing females. Males are, I don't know, I like curves. So for the head, I'm going to just be going for a kind of, it would be the chin, I'm only doing one side. So basically like that, and there might be a little indent where the eyes would go. And I do the eyes generally in the middle, then the nose, and then the mouth. So I'm going to make this a bit uh, thinner. Because a woman's jaw is typically thinner. Okay, that's pretty good. I have the bulk of the skull back here and then kind of that face. And I'll be doing uh, some refinements to this when we get into sculpt mode. I'm back into object mode and I'm going to, I don't have a mirror modifier on. If you have a mirror modifier on, apply it before you go into sculpt mode because you won't be able to see it. And then I'm going to go down and go into topology and enable dynamic. Uh, the detail level uh, default is at 30. Um, I prefer it around 20, but uh, you should stick with the higher number if you're just doing uh, the mass shapes and then it gets into the smaller numbers um, and when you're going for more detail. Um, for symmetrize, um, you want to have a symmetry on the x axis and also this for me I like to go from right to left so what I'm doing on the right side is what I want to be on the left side so I t t put this to plus x to minus x this side is plus x this side is minus x that way if I do something uh, on this side and it's not matching perfectly with the other side uh, I can put hit symmetrize in and it will fix that side. 
Let's undo that. Okay. Oh, you can't really see that. Hold on. There we go. So I'm just going to start um, with the indent that I talked about. Uh, like I said, it's just going to go like this, and it's going to go in, and it's going to go out to the nose, and it's going to go in, and it's going to go out and in, and out and in, and then up into the chin. So the face is a bunch of angles, really. Not too complicated when you think about it. So I'm going to start with my clay brush. Can't tell I'm on my clay tool. You can see it right here. I might not always be in this area, um, but I have uh, hot keys. So for me, C is my clay brush. X is my draw brush. V is the clay strips. You know, grab is G is the grab brush, and uh, um, all of that. Um, I set those up myself because I didn't like the default ones, but uh, G is still the grab brush. I believe C is still the clay brush. Okay. Let's start. I'm going to start basically just by indenting. I'm going to actually put this down to 20 because I prefer it at 20. And a subdivide collapse is anything uh, under 20 pixels. Any line under 20 pixels will uh, be made 20 pixels. So it'll get rid of the detail. Okay, so indent. Alright, indent. Just work on the broad shapes, really. And S is, I mean, shift hold down is the smooth tool. The nose will be protruding. Let's see, let me up the strength of my clay brush a bit. Okay. And I'm gonna smooth it out for oops. Oh control is um the inverse of the brush. So if you're building up material it'll take away material. Okay, smooth out that jaw area. Okay. Um, so you can see I'm not going off of a reference, but I have a general idea of the kind of face I'm trying to do. I just kind of go with uh, whatever I think looks good. Uh, the closer you zoom in, the smaller the detail. So you don't always have to change the uh, the pixel size. I'm just going to keep indenting the eyes and then when I get to a point where I need to add in those eyeballs, I will do that. Frequently, it's pretty important. Uh, 2.5. I'm just going to start uh, defining important areas like where the top lip will be um, and then where the bottom lip will be. And then the corners of the mouth, I'll start indenting it inward because the mouth that goes into the face. And now I'll use the grab brush to pull that in. You can press F to change the size of your brush, okay? Um, you can also put um, your strength, set your, or the size of your brush to your pin strokes, so it'll be small and it'll get bigger as you go. I don't like that too much because uh, the size of my brush isn't always congruent with the strength that I want it to be at. So I do better to just change the size, it's pretty quick and easy. the left side, so I t t put this to plus x to minus x, this side is plus x, this side is minus x, that way if I do something uh, on this side and it's not matching perfectly with the other side, uh, I can put hit some tries and it will fix that side. So I do that. Okay. Oh, you can't really see that. Hold on. There we go. So I'm just going to start um, 
with the indent that I talked about. Uh, like I said, this is going to go like this, and it's going to go in, and it's going to go out the nose, and it's going to go in, and it's going to go out and in, and out and in, and then up into the chin. So it faces a bunch of angles, really. Uh, not too complicated when you think about it. So I'm going to start with my clay brush. You can't tell I'm on my clay tool. You can see it right here. I might not always be in this area, uh, but I have a hot piece. So for me, C is my clay brush, X is my draw brush, B is the clay strips, you know, grab is, G is the grab brush, and uh, um, all that. Um, I set those up myself because I didn't like... I suggest you have collapse turned on, at least in the beginning, because when you symmetrize, you'll have these parts where, obviously, that's a smaller pixel size than I'm actually working with, and when you press on those, they'll be fixed. Actually, I'm zoomed in, so it's just making it smaller, but if you zoom out, Press on those, they'll, they'll get um, larger. Or they'll get uh, collapsed. Yeah. Collapsed down. So, a quick video on it, but I don't really remember. So, now I'm just going to de depress the uh, holes of the nose. It's pretty simple. I'm going to use the draw tool actually because it pushes harder. Switch back to the clay tool. You can work with this uh, dent thing in the lip if you like. You don't always have to do that. I'm going to use the uh, crease brush. Um, I don't have a hot key for that, and I don't know what the default is because I don't use it that often, um, or I don't use it as often as the other ones, but I should probably look into that. And this actually does subdivide. I don't think it did in the previous versions work with the dynamic topology. Maybe it did. I don't remember. So that's cool. And you can pinch. I don't have a hotkey for that either. And I don't know what the default is, but just pinch those and then go back to the clay tool, smooth, add some volume to that. Dent it in to the face. She's kind of smiling right now. Um, depending on what you're doing the sculpture for, you might want to have more neutral expression on her face so you can use the grab tool to make sure that she's very neutral okay now when you get focused in like this and you're working on the lip shape you know you can lose uh, track of the proportions of the face and what you're doing overall so I'm gonna get my clay tool and I don't really like the shape of the face or rather this back area of the head so I'm gonna smooth that it's gotten wide because I've been focusing in. So actually I can go into my grab tool and uh, change that. Move that down a little bit. Um, actually go back to that. That's better. So it's always uh, back and forth between the shape of the head and what you're sculpting. And you might start out with the head shape and then start sculpting and realize, you know, it doesn't really fit anymore. Got to fix it. It might end up going uh, into a, it's called like a rotoscope view or, you know, tunnel vision where you're working on this and then everything else is not congruent with what you've been doing. So you've got to just take a step back, zoom out, and look at the big picture. That's important. I learned that in my drawing classes. Working with a charcoal and a big canvas. Uh, yeah, charcoal is pretty fun, but it's also messy. I suggest you play with it. <laughs> I, at this point, I'm going to turn off Subdivide Collapse because I don't want it to get rid of the detail I have. But I go back and forth between turning it on and off as I go. Smooth out the chin a little. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add those eyeballs. I'm just going to do shift A mesh UV sphere. It comes in there. I'm gonna grab it. Size it down. I'm going to go into a side view by pressing numpad 3. Rotate 9 degrees. 
around and move it. Make sure you get the size of the eyeball that you want. I press Z to go into wireframe mode. Um, I don't know. I think I actually want her eye to be bigger. Maybe a little bit. Maybe. I don't know. Pressing G to move that. You can turn off this widget by pressing Control Space Tab. Um, or you can just press this right here. Same thing. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and you can smooth it. I don't really care, but I'll go ahead and smooth it. And then go to Shading Smooth. And then I'll add a mirror modifier. And um, because its center point isn't in the middle, I have to tell it what to mirror around. So I'll go ahead and mirror it around the cube, which is our face. And actually, I'll go ahead and change the name of that to keep organized. Hide the head. Eyes. Okay. And I'll go... Uh, click our head and go back into sculpt mode and you have to enable dynamic again. It doesn't stay on when you go out of sculpt mode. Remember that. Um, also, to do this, I am using my Wacom Intuos 4 tablet. It comes in very handy. I suggest um, if you enjoy drawing or sculpting digitally or anything involving, involving drawing like practices, <coughs> excuse me, that you get a Wacom tablet. Um, I suggest saving up for a Wacom rather than buying something cheaper because it might not last. I haven't used anything besides Wacom because it was required for my college courses. Anyways, um, I'm just going to start pulling the eye eyes out, um, the eyelids out. I'm going to change this to 15 so I can get a little more detail and zoom in. Okay. Just uh, slowly build up the shape of the eyes. It's pretty good. Typically, the shape of the eyes. You know, you have a curve. You have a little tear duct. I don't focus on the tear duct as much because I don't really like how it looks. Focus on that major curve of it. Yep. And then I'm going to start working on the nose a bit. I go back and forth between the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Um, just trying to keep perspective on everything I do. Just once I get bored, trying to find the detail in one aspect, I can move on to the next aspect. As I said, I'm not the best sculptor, um, but I think I can see shapes pretty well. And it helps me to see clearer when I'm not stuck on one part of a drawing or a sculpture or anything like that. So that's pretty good. We got a basic look uh, to a face going on. I'm going to smooth out her head a bit more. Yeah, this is kind of protruding her forehead. I never fixed that, so I'm just going to smooth it a bit and see if it's too much actually. And there's going to be an indent where her temple is. Try to work that in. It's a little too much. Let's see. I look at this curve. 
for this curvature of the face, I want that to indent a bit. So I'll just kind of figure out where that's happening and make it indent. This is one of those cases where I like to turn on a subdivide collapse because uh, this part is getting on my nerves. Zoom out, do it some more. Makes it easier to smooth. Uh, also, the way you turn on uh, that matte cap kind of ZBrush thing to go into shading. Um, matte cap and then you can choose from a bunch of options I like the pink one and the ZBrush one but I don't always use that because I'm kind of used to just saying it as white um, but I never really used this one either it's not bad and if they have like a clay one they should have one like this but that's more soft like this one and that could be a nice clay type thing mm -hmm. yeah. it's a nice way to if you need to see dynamics then yeah, use that okay I'm gonna fix the mouth shape a little bit because she is smiling and that's not a bad thing but Her lips are a little small. I'm just going to spread them out a little bit more. Okay. Cool. And then I'll just smooth this out. Her eyebrows would go here. Turn some divide collapse off. I find that I use the draw tool to push this in a bit more. Um, I'll be ending this soon, and then I'll start working on part three probably. Maybe I'll even put it up today. I don't know. Key for that. One that I'll actually remember. Is this. No. This. Look at inside view and you've got that that in and then the out, which is what you're looking for. I'm using D to go into draw tool into the draw tool. Get a little bit of a button nose rather than whatever's going on right here. Her nose is very upturned. That's not a bad thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with an upturned nose. It can be pretty cute if you do it right. But I'm going to lower this a little bit. And I'm going to make her nose more of a button nose. Because those are cute. Big noses can be very cute. It's 
not bad, but I'm not the best at noses. Okay, save again. So it's got a basic face down. You can You could pull the eye sockets back some, change the shape of the head. You know, right now her face is kind of flat. So go ahead and do that. Why not? The eyes to go back a bit more. Um, go into object mode. Move this back. No. That's fine. You can make her cheeks poofier or not poofier. Add in her eyebrows. You can actually make this a little less prominent. Her eyebrow ridge is kind of severe right now. You don't always have to go into a dynamic topology if you like you know the amount of uh, control you have right now you can just smooth it out you know it won't add more topology and if you think you always have enough topology and you don't need to keep doing that then just do it like this not bad. Uh, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you kind of uh, understand my process a bit more. That's going to be about it for this. Um, and of course, you can change the shaders. Make it a skin tone color. Or whatever. Oh, and also, just a final note to, to extrude the neck out, you can use the snake hook tool while you're on dynamic topology so it'll create some extra topology you can uh, just extrude the neck out from there and from there you can change the size and stuff yeah so anyways uh thank you for uh, watching this quick video i hope it helped i hope it um wasn't as fast and um, hopefully I didn't leave anything out. Uh, if you have any questions, comment below. And if you want to see more of these slower type videos, I might do one after every uh, segment. Like when I start doing the hair, maybe I'll create a quick hair video or something like that. Yeah. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Save video.